To complete this first introductory lesson, I propose you some example of machine learning task. The first example is what has become now a classical example of digit recognition from handwritten images. You have on one hand a large database of handwritten digits available as images with associated the number that is pictured on each image and this is the famous MNIST handwritten digit database and we use it to train our machine learning algorithm. On the other hand, you have a bunch of images that you want the computer to automatically extract the information of the actual digit that is pictured in each image. And in my case, I have asked my colleagues to write the digits with a marker pen. Here is how they wrote the digits. As you can see, people write numbers very differently. For example, uh, here the four can be written like this or uh, very differently like this. Uh, the same as for the digit, digit nine, like this or uh, here, like this. After a bunch of image processing, you have these images transformed in something similar to those in the MNIST dataset. And I stressed similar because the difficulty of this task is indeed in the, this transformation task rather than in the modeling itself. We will see that while we can have very good results when we split the MNIST dataset in two and we use one part for training and the other for testing, we'll get much less precise but still exciting results when using the images we created. This is not uh, due to the model that is not good, but on the fact that indeed it's not me that I created the training test. I don't know exactly how the images has been processed in that public database. So I am trying to do my best and produce images that seems that look similar to those used in the training, but they are indeed fundamentally different on the eyes of the machine. And this is also to highlight one important caveat of supervised machine learning models. The training and the test sets or even more impar importantly, the elements that will be fed when uh, the model enter production stage must have, have the same characteristics or the results of the model will quickly deteriorate. This is the actual script. As you can see, it is very short. Most of the code is uh, to load or to clean the images. The actual uh, algorithm is uh, very short. So we use here a neural network with four convolutional uh, layers. We will see what are these in the neural network lesson. So here we define the structure of the neural network and here we train the neural network with the training data. We find which are the parameters of the neural network that make the output of the network closest to the actual labels. Here we compute the accuracy, both with respect with uh, the same training set and the test set but we can see here we have uh, very good results. 95% of images are correctly catalogued. However, when we measure the accuracy with our images, we have a mere 75% or so. Again, this depends on the images that we are feeding the model having different characteristics than those used for training it. These other three examples come from the documentation of BetaML, a machine learning library we wrote in Julia. In the first one, we predict the influence of several variables over the demand for public rented bikes. So the variable to predict is the number of rented bikes. 
even if the output is not actually continuous, this is commonly regarded, regarded as a regression task. In the second example, instead, we have a database with various technical characteristics of commercial cars, and we try to infer the country of origin based on these characteristics. This is a classification task. Finally, in the third example, we try to group plants together based on some floral characteristics as the sepal length. We use another very common uh, public database, the IRIS dataset, and we try to come with a data-driven organization that is uh, let the algorithm learn a good classification by itself without providing uh, it with uh, the real species information associated to each plant. And this is a clustering job, and this is a prominent example of uh, unsupervised task. So after you have set up a Julia environment on your PC, you can download the scripts on this address under the tutorial section and run them by yourself. We close here this long uh, kickoff lesson and uh, let's start in the next lessons to dig a bit more in deep the topics that we introduced today.